unfortunately, the Hyatt powerhouse was protected by almost superhuman effort to, to waterproof that plant and keep it operational. Um, and that effort goes on every day to make sure that it's waterproof, that something changes, it's, that we can take on that additional tailwater. We might have to turn it off if we get more tailwater than they want. But again, that's why we're going to start back on dredging to make sure that we clear that channel and we can operate that plant at full. Now that's going to be an interesting story after the fact is the superhuman effort that went in to save the Hyatt power plant during this emergency. That's a story that's going to unfold well after uh, things get under control here at Oroville. It's Monday the 27th of March and we passed another important milestone at Oroville today and a result of this uh, press briefing here. They've turned off the spillway and completed the first cycle of this so-called, uh, what you might call a yo-yo effect. Now, if you watch the mainstream media, uh, you would be led to believe that they shut the main spillway off to repair the main spillway. No, they shut the main spillway off because they're forced to shut the main spillway off. They have no choice. Remember, they're operating the throttle stuck at 40,000 CFS to avoid uh, either head cutting or excessive erosion downstream, and the reservoir level has to be maintained between a peak of 860 to 865 feet and no lower than 835 feet to avoid scouring or eroding the inlet to the main spillway. So they're stuck running the spillway with the stuck throttle between those two levels. This is the first spill of this cycle and it looks like depending on how the spring goes they may have to repeat this cycle two more times but we've got good weather ahead uh they've got a great opportunity to affect some more repairs on the main spillway and inspect it and let's go look at the details of today's briefing and see what all he talked about bill croyal department of water resources quick check of the real-time numbers now the spillway has been running for 10 days it's been brought down from 865 feet right back down to 836 feet and of course 835 feet is where they got to knock it off they have to shut it off to protect the inlet to the main spillway so outflows have been that steady 40,000 CFS and as they briefed today they brought they ratcheted down the outflows from 40 down to 35 for two hours, down to 30,000 CFS for two hours, and then just shut it off entirely, the main spillway. In the meantime, the Hyatt power plant has been shut down. The Hyatt power plant the last couple of days has been operating at a considerably reduced output down to as low as 2,000 CFS. Why? Because, as Bill talked about today, due to concerns about the, the level of the water in the Thermolito diversion pool, the, the level of the water at the exhaust ports of the Hyatt power plant, that water level has gotten a little too high and started causing concern for the health of the Hyatt power plant, so they greatly reduced the output of the Hyatt power plant. But as they bring this outflow down to zero, they're going to ramp up the Hyatt power plant because as they bring this down to zero, that water level at the exhaust ports should 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 come down enough to fire up the Hyatt power plant back up to full speed. And it looks like they got it going here, 10, 11,000 CFS as of six o'clock this evening, Monday evening. Inflows are still uh, varying anywhere from 25,000 down to 18,000 as things freeze up in the evening and, and slows down and then warm up during the day and, and increase. They're predicting, they're, they're basing a lot of their future plans on an estimated average inflow of approximately 27,000 CFS. River releases match the uh, outflows from the reservoir upwards of 40,000 CFS. And the plan here, here's the... Here's the delicate balance they've got to achieve as they shut off this spillway. They ratchet the spillway down to zero, bring up the Hyatt power plant almost simultaneously, and at the same time release additional water from the uh, Thermolito forebays and afterbays back into the Feather River to minimize the um, fluctuations in water levels downstream in the Feather River, minimize the dis disruptions downstream.
rain. <laughs> Good point about the rain. We are within a couple of inches of being of this year being the second wettest rain year on record in the last hundred years. So rain right here at the dam remains steady at uh, just under 43 inches. The Sierra 7 day forecast looks great for a week of work uh, on and around the Orville situation with a little bit of weather anticipated for Thursday but otherwise good weather and cool temperatures freezing at night keeping that snowpack in place and allowing it to melt gradually. Here on the historic images of Google Earth we can get a better look at that spillway why that's got to be limited at 235 feet to keep from from scouring or eroding right there. Down here is where at current the level of this Thermalito diversion pool was at 232.8 feet so high flow into here and a little bit of debris causes this water to pile up a little too high up against the exhaust ports of the Hyatt power plant right there. That's the water level that they need to keep very, monitoring very closely and um, through, uh, and about 225 feet is the optimum water level for that power plant so it's a little too high right now and they need to get that water level down and that water is going to come down as they shut off the main spillway and of course clean out more debris at the base of the spillway and by the way they're still running with five turbines in the Hyatt power plant one is still down for repairs no word as to when that one's going to be back up and running so with five turbines running that'll give them the 12,000 CFS capability to continue to flow out of the Hyatt power plant even with the main spillway shut off speaking of debris speaking of debris they're still looking at 1.25 million yards cubic million yards of debris removed from the uh, tail race of the spillway or from the Thermalito diversion pool. The number still stands at 1.7 million cubic yards of debris total, uh, but they are going to take a closer look and see what additional debris has landed in the um, tail race since this spill. But it doesn't look like a whole lot significant more material. We'll know more tomorrow and the next day. So in the meantime, with the main spillway shut off, they've got a lot of work cut out as the water level builds back up from 835 to 860, 865 feet. they got about 30 feet to work with here. And during this time period, based on how much time Mother Nature gives them, they're going to continue to uh, dredge out the Thermalito um, diversion pool. they got to rebuild the roads. The roads around Orville have just been trashed with all this heavy equipment operating, and they've got to build the road to the spillway back up to highway standards. Caltrans is going to get right on that right away, and that'll be done in a couple of days. They're going to stabilize the slopes along the side sides of the uh, newly formed canyons to protect workers working down below. They're doing a lot of geological work as they prepare to come up with their new design ideas. They're going to continue to bore holes uh, into the uh, existing main spillway on the upper deck there for geologic uh, samples and, and uh, they, they need to find out what's the bedrock like underneath the existing main spillway. How strong is it and how are they going to fa fasten the the new spillway design, let alone repair the existing spillway design and keep it fastened to the bedrock down below? So lots of geologic work, and the deb big debate is how many holes do we drill into the main spillway before we start impacting it or hurting it? How the hell they know how many holes it took to fill the Albert Hall, right? And of course, they're also going to see how much more wear and tear the canyon took and how much more wear and tear the main spillway took, repair any more joints, cracks, spalling, and that sort of thing on the main spillway, on the upper section. Also see how that shot creep uh, fared and replace as necessary before the next spill. Department of Fish and Game reported that they saved 9 million fish with practically zero losses. They've already released 1 million Chinook salmon 
tagged and have been released and they're going to tag and, and release another million so they'll be able to monitor these fish in three years hence when they return to see how well did the salmon that survived the Oroville spillway disaster how well did they fare in three years so that'll be kind of interesting he emphasized the importance of the Oroville hatchery um, raises 50% of the fall run salmon in California so it's important to get that hatchery up and running and it uh, and, and they're very close to having that up and running at this time questions from the crowd uh, costs <laughs> he's still uh, he's still sticking to the numbers uh, 100 to 200 million bucks in costs so far uh, with no no guesstimation as to where they're going with the cost of this entire rebuild He mentioned that other types of materials and design concepts have been considered. So everybody on the forum here talking about bridges or steel or that sort of thing, they're, they're talking about all, all your different ideas. In the end, though, I think it's going to be another concrete and rebar spillway, very similar to the one that we have today, only brought up to modern standards. But we're going to know more. He says the homework assignment is to, for engineers to have a 60% design on his desk by the end of this week or the beginning of next week. Now, I'm not sure what a 60% design is, but I suspect that, you know, we're going to have a, a pretty good idea what the, what the rebuild design is going to look like. Also, he needs to have all contingency plans in place for what happens if we get halfway down the road with this design and we hit a huge snag and next winter's rain's coming. What's going to be the contingency plans? And then finally a question came from the mainstream media that just emphasized to me how they just don't, simply don't understand the importance of Oroville Reservoir, even what its purpose is. The question was, why don't y'all just drain the lake? Well, they can't just drain the lake. Oroville Reservoir is the keystone reservoir of the entire California aqueduct system. And regardless of the health of that reservoir, they need to contain a sufficient amount of water in Oroville to operate the California aqueduct system throughout this summer to get water all the way down to Southern California. Now, it's been such a good rain year, maybe they're going to be able to get a break and be able to operate at a considerably smaller volume this year, but with all this emergency going on, Oroville Reservoir needs to continue to still operate as a water storage reservoir to feed the California aqueduct. So no, they're not draining the lake. That is not an option. How full the lake will remain after the final spill, they are evaluating that twice a day. And we're going to find out very soon. So stay tuned for this fascinating engineering puzzle. It just continues to uh, <laughs> remain very complicated and very much a situation where time is of the essence. Next fall is coming very soon. Meanwhile, I've been working hard to get the Luscom back in the air after her uh, annual inspection. Uh, and I'm looking forward, hopefully, to some good drone footage will be made available by the Department of Water Resources tomorrow showing the shutting off of the spillway. So I've been unable to get down there today to watch, watch what's going on with the spillway. And then later on this week, maybe go down there and take a look and see, see how the spillway fared through this first spill.